Hello everyone, continuing on with the equity method. Uh, we're looking at objective number three. We're going to take a look at the journal entries under this method. So we'll use big company and little company as our example. Big company uh, purchased a 20% interest in little company on January 1st, 2017 for $200,000. So on big company uh, books, we are going to um, do a journal entry on January 1st, 2017 to record this investment. We debit the investment in little company for 200,000 and um, the consideration paid. Now this consideration pay could, could be in cash, could be debt, or it could be uh, stock. Okay, so just pay attention to that. Don't always assume that's gonna be cash. And then we're told that Little has reported income for the next three years. Um, we're given the amount of that income, and we're also given uh, the dividends that uh, were paid to the shareholders. Uh, in addition, we have the fair values of the investment. Uh, so depending if we're using fair value method versus equity method. So on the first uh, column here, um, we have Lita's, um income for the three years, and we have the dividends that were paid on or declared in this case, um, the three years, 2017, 18, and 19. Now the fair value method is guided by ASC 321, and the equity method is guided by ASC 323. Now, if we were, uh, let's say we don't exercise significant influence, so we're going to be using the fair value method. Uh, we're going to have to record our dividend income on the income statement, our share, again, of that dividend income. So 20% of the 50000 for 2017, 20% of the 100000 for 2018, and 20% of the 200,000 for 2019. In addition to that, we're paying attention to the fair market value because we're gonna have to make an adjustment on our income statement um, if the securities or the investment has increased or decreased in value. In this case, the uh, investment increased in value uh, it appreciated in value, and therefore we have um, recorded our income on the income statement. Okay, so if we were to add the dividend income and uh, the additional income from the appreciation on this investment, we'll end up with 195,000 uh, cumulative effect on our income statement. Now, in terms of the equity method, we are reporting 20% of uh, the 250,000, so that's the 50,000, 20% of 300,000, so that's 60,000, and 20% of 400,000, and that's 80,000. So for the equity method, we're looking at Little's net income, uh, for the fair value method, we were looking at dividends and the change in value, fair market value. For equity method, we're looking at Little's income and Little's dividends, and those are going to affect our investment account, our T account. Uh, so if you recall, we purchased this investment for 200000 and so it, the 200000 was increased by the 50,000 in 2017, but also decreased by 20% of the 50,000 or 10,000. So the balance at the end of the year in 2017 for the investment in little account is 240,000. And the same would be for 2018 and 2019. So here we have the journal entries for 2017. These journal entries will be done by big company, okay? And so we have um, 
uh, were reflecting the our share of uh, little companies' income in 2017, so 20% of the 250,000. We uh, debit the investment in little account, and then we credit the equity in investee income. So you want to refer back to the T accounts that we have in the second presentation to see how this is going to increase and decrease the two accounts. We also have a dividend. In this case, uh, your textbook has used dividends receivable, but it could also be cash, directly to cash. So we received uh, cash, or we have this dividend receivable, uh, and then we're going to credit the investment in little account. Remember that the dividends will decrease the investment in little account. Okay, just similar to retained earnings. So net income increases it and uh, dividends decrease the account. And I just wanted to show you an example from the Coca-Cola company's annual report as to how these uh, investments are reported in real life. Uh, or, or a real world um, example. And so you can see the equity method investments that are being reported in their consolidated financial statements under uh, total assets. So these are more long term assets that are being reported here. Um, so that's the balance sheet. And then we have the income statement. And here we have the net effect of the um, equity method investments. Okay, so in this case, uh, the company had uh, net income from all these investments. So they don't just have one equity investment, they have many. And so they kind of uh, summarize them all for uh, reporting purposes on the financial statements. And then we have also the effect on the statement of cash flows. And like we said, uh, mostly the investing activities will be affected by uh, purchases and sales of the investments uh, under the equity method. And last, I kind of wanted to um, sort of review these comprehensive income statement that we went over in intermediate accounting. I kind of wanted you to think about how this is affected. And I think you guys took a look at this in Intermediate Accounting 2 uh, when you were looking at pensions. Um, so the different items that are reported under the statement of comprehensive income. Because uh, we're going to be looking at this in more detail later on uh, for when we're looking at foreign currency and uh, other other advanced accounting topics.